there is now a real challenge to the old values, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which we used to think used to sit there like a rock, is also being challenged in many ways. And why have we not been re re revising, reimagining, and recreating and redefining the paradigms on which we try to create our world? So I see an immense change taking place in the world as a shift in consciousness and global consciousness. And so what is happening is that we are now becoming aware that the nation state system is dysfunctional. The world is so fragmented, it's in so many places, issues are so complex. But the one critical ingredient remains the role of civil society. And that is something we must work together with, we must work together on, and work, and work to enhance and, and increase. Everybody should have an equal chance to participate in a, in a, in a vibrant global economy. And uh, I, I think uh, the way it is now, uh, too, too many people are really excluded from that. Um, involving citizens themselves and having citizens take charge and responsibility of the development aid itself and involving them in the planning impl implementation so that they can take ownership and take charge because that is the only way that they can hold their leaders accountable if they feel that they are part of the process. It is critical to recognize that addressing governance challenges from a human rights perspective makes a real difference because it provides a framework for holding governments accountable for their performance. So today, ladies and gentlemen, the issue before us is the question of how. How do we, we engage with international governmental organizations uh, given the way the world operates? And what does that mean? How does power operate? Um, how do we engage in a way that achieves the positive ends that we seek for? We need to invest in those few organizations that have the ability to make sense of all that noise and begin to align people around the critical things that really must happen.